Oh, you motherfucker. Hello and welcome back to Middle Age of Moto. Uh, having trouble getting this video done today. This is like my third take. Uh, I haven't been on the bike in about a week. Uh, we've had some uh, residual from the hurricane that hit the Gulf. And a uh, bunch of rain, not really anything uh, major, no real major flooding or anything. But uh, I've been off the bike and I'm really, I'm enjoying the scenery and everything. But I really uh, feel compelled to do some semblance of a video. Uh, I don't really have a superb topic today, but um, I have mentioned in previous videos that I had pretty much made a decision that uh, the Honda CRF 300L was going to be my next bike, and possibly still will be, okay? Um, but uh, as I've mentioned in another video, I am going through a divorce, so the dynamic of my time is going to be changing to where I can take some longer trips and, and do some stuff. Sure. I could do it on the CRF, uh, but uh, the thing's not great at anything. It's not great on the road, not great off-road, but you can do both, you know, and it's very inexpensive. But, you know, one thing that caught my eye, which is totally, you know, in left field, was the new Harley-Davidson Sportster S. I really, really have taken a liking to that bike. It's a, it's a good-looking bike, and I know all my real, true Harley enthusiasts are like, "Oh God, it's not a Harley." Kind of like, you know, the new monster is not a monster, but I like it. Um, I think what they've done is they really tapped into a demographic that uh, will definitely help their business. I think. Um, I really, I've always liked Harleys. I like the look of Harleys, but I was never. I always felt like they underperformed and you, you know you didn't really get they're a good cruiser but they were heavy and they underperformed and I don't know I just was not a huge fan uh, I didn't dislike them but I didn't you know I'd spend my money elsewhere let's put it that way but I'm looking at that thing and that thing is absolutely gorgeous but then as I'm looking at that it kind of parlays because it's $14,000 $15,000 so it's above the price range that I want to spend. I don't really want a second bike to be super expensive. I really want a Japanese bike. So this will be the bike that I can just ride all the time, take out at night, because I'll have that time now. You know what I mean? I'm not going to feel compelled. My ex-wife or my future soon-to-be ex-wife, she never really gave me any crap about riding. And I could have ridden any time, but I felt compelled to be around and be home and be present and that kind of stuff. But I don't have that responsibility, or at least the, the self-induced responsibility that I had in the past. Now, so I can take some day trips and I can take a, you know, leave on a Friday and go up to um, the mountains in, uh, in Tennessee or, or go into, into Georgia or... And the CRF really wouldn't be, you know, something for that in my eyes. Uh, I'm sure you could, but I mean, it's really not a, you know, to jump on the highway, it's that's probably not something I want to do. Uh, my Street Fighter is definitely not something that, you know, I could do it on this too. You pretty much do it on any anyway. But this wouldn't be optimal for that. So I'm really, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of all over the map again. And I've been researching. Um, the uh, Yamaha Tracer 9, really think that that's a really sharp bike. Uh, but they went ahead and they, the, the GT model is all I can see that's available currently uh, in the United States. And it's got adjustable suspension and all this other stuff, but it's a, you know, another $14,000 bike. And so I'm trying to stay around the 10, 12, maybe 10, 11 price range just to, you know, keep a, get a cheaper bike. Uh, and then my afterthought was, well, I get the CRF, it's only 5,200 bucks. Uh, you know, just ride it for a while and then go ahead and get another bike and have three bikes. But, you know, my concern is what niche is the CRF gonna, gonna plug into? And I battled this before. So, I'm gonna keep on doing research. I'm not buying anything until maybe this fall anyways. Um, and I'm gonna kind of hold off, get through all the, you know, the financial blow of the divorce and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and kind of, you know, get everything back on track. 
then I'm going to consider uh, what my next bike is. So uh, I think it's time to try to work out some test rides, which, you know, we'll see if we can uh, we can do that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, pick back up here. Uh, there's some construction back there that uh, had grown quite a bit since I've been here three or the last time, so I wasn't sure uh, what I was going to expect as far as road dirt, and gravel, and that kind of stuff. So I wanted to really concentrate on uh, keeping an eye out for any danger. So I kind of abruptly cut off, but. Uh, so I gotta make a decision, uh, not a hasty decision. And to be honest with you, the, the hunt is half the fun. Um, I, I don't, at this point, I like to make the decision and then just kind of focus on, on the bike that I'm gonna be getting. And, and <laughs> I'm having trouble, I really am. Uh, maybe I need multiples, you know, maybe I need to get the CRF and, and then uh, and then some, some sort of adventure bike too. I just can't, you know, I can't swing both of them at the same time or refuse to, you know, do that, lay out that kind of money. Um, so it'll be one and then uh, when that's paid for, whether I finance or I pay cash for it, then I'll go with the second one. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. If you got this far, I appreciate it and uh, we'll talk to you on the next video.